Well, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see Brother Brandon again. I had the same since he was a little boy. I guess he's just a little boy when his mama used to bring him in. Glad to see he's back on the right track. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, Thank you. Praise the Lord. Like the prodigal son. He got out eating it, getting ready to eat the husk that the swine did eat, and he came to his senses. He said, My father's house I have greater than this to eat. He said, I'll go. He said, I'll go and go back to my father. He said, as he began his journey, as he got near the home, the father looked up and he saw someone coming. Right? Mm -hmm. And he ran out to meet him. Oh, God. Put his cloak around him. Put a coat on him, right? Put a ring on his finger. finger sign of, uh, of unending love. And so that's the way God is, isn't it? God sees us coming back in. He wraps us up. And uh, we don't want to be like the older brother, do we? Look at people who spend their life in righteous living and then begin to minimize. And uh, the father rebuked him and told him, he said, he said, all that I have belongs to you. You know, here is your brother who is lost. And so that's the attitude of the Lord. I appreciate God today. Thank God for the testimonies last night. Those of you that weren't here had a, a, a wonderful testimony service. And, uh, it was uh, hearing from God and feeling God's spirit. Uh, I would tell you, uh, my wife gave a testimony concerning my son. Uh, when he was in a car accident, he was going up and down this place they called Hot Rod Haven, and he wrapped a car like a U around the tree. She didn't tell you that part. But uh, two or three days before, I told my wife, I said, I dreamt we were, we were going to get a new car. And I thought it was going to be a new family vehicle, but I didn't know it was going to be the one we had provided for our son. But I dreamt we were going to get a new car. At that time, we had a we had a uh, we had a uh, Oldsmobile uh, 98 Regency, and we had some difficulty with it. And I thought we were going to get a new car, and so I went that. And then I had a dream that I was in the midst of a group of people, and they were all tore up. All of them were all distraught. They were just tore up, wringing their hands and going back and forth, and. And I just stepped in and began to talk to him in a nice, calm voice. And uh, so this is the way God works when you're in the proper relationship with him. He gives you foreknowledge of things that are about to happen. You may not be able to see the overall picture, but God prepares you for certain things uh, when you're in covenant relationship with him. And uh, so... My wife, we got that call, as my wife said, uh, it was on a Friday night, and my son, he was, I guess he's pretty reckless, 16 years old, driving his little, his mom's uh, uh, Escort GT, racing stripes and mag wheels and all that, and, and so uh, he's going up and down those hills, and we got the call, we got in the car, and I ran up there, and before I got the car stopped, Sister Linda jumped out of the car, and ran up there. Well, when we got up there, I got the car parked up behind the fire engine. There was the ambulance, and and she they stopped her, and I just walked uh, calmly down to the uh, calmly down to the car and began to uh, inquire. And they said, "You need to get back from here." I said, "No, I'm his father." And I, they said, "No, you don't realize the danger that you're in." because of the gasoline and the explosion, what could happen. And we're going to have to cut him out of here. He said, I said, just relax. Everything's going to be all right. Now, here are these paramedics and here are these firemen, and I'm telling them to relax that everything is going to be all right. Who can do that but God? And so they took the jaws of life and cut him out and took him up on a stretcher, and while the paramedics were working on him, his head 
was all cut up and everything. And uh, while he was there, uh, my wife said, told you about me praying for him. I reached in the window and prayed for him. He said, Dad, I can't breathe, can't breathe. And so as we, uh, as I began to pray for him, he just, <gasps> like that, and he took a big breath, and he was able to start breathing again. Well, they took him up the hill, put him had on a gurney, carried him up the hill, and when they got up the top of the hill, the paramedics were hustling around with blood everywhere. And I just said, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. And they said, who are you? And I thought, this is nothing but the hand of God that prepares you for things like that. And uh, before we go any further, I'd like to say how much I appreciate this assembly. Uh, it's, an, it's always been an anchor for me. Uh, your pastor is my friend, and, it's, and you are all part of my family. Uh, uh, I miss faces I don't see today. I haven't seen. Uh, I always make my way to Brother Donald's wife and greet her uh, because we were such good friends, her husband and I. And I was here the day she got the Holy Ghost over in that corner right there. She had no idea what she was getting a hold of, but I want you to know it, 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 it just keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. And so... And then, uh, in reflection, I looked back uh, at some videos many years ago, and I saw my former pastor, my, fo my father in the gospel, Brother James Sider, standing at this pulpit. And I saw Sister Dolores over there on the organ, and Brother Ensel, and it was a, a meeting how that God was putting his acceptance on this place, how that... God blessed and overshadowed this, and so we're 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 standing on the shoulders of great men and women. And Sister Sabrina, I so enjoyed you today as well, and uh, listening to you, I, I was I was make remarking to Brother Bob last night, uh, Brother Mauser. I said, Brother Mauser, I said, what a blessing it is to have these helps in the church. I referred to Sister Mauser while she was up preaching, Sister Linda and Sister Pam. And Sister Pam said, I didn't know how, why, how I talked so long. And she said, oh, Brother Chris, she said, I didn't mean to. I said, don't you, don't you say anything about that. I said, that's what the Lord wanted. And we're happy for whatever God wants, whatever God, position God puts us in, whatever God delivers for us. We, we want to receive it because there's messages in there. I think there were messages last night for individuals to give people hope about what God can do, what God has done, and what God will do. He is both past, present, and future. He's the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. I thank the Lord for that. Uh, I like uh, what the writer said in Matthew 121. He said, and a virgin shall conceive, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he shall save people from their sins. Not in their sins, but from their sins. God, Brother Brandon, God save you from your sins, right? And not in your sins, but he brought you out of that, right? Now you, now you have a greater hope, and now God's going to put some responsibility on you, Brother Brandon, because the Lord expects you to do a reciprocation work in your life to begin to tell people about the goodness of the Lord, about where you were and what kind of life you were in, but now have, God has promoted you and brought you out of that situation, and now he has set your feet. Uh, on a solid rock. He has established your goings, right? So don't depart from that. Keep your eyes focused and singled on heaven. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we sing a song, uh, keep your eyes on Jesus and you won't see the way. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the one who can save. When the waves of doubt assail you, there is one. Yeah who will not fail you. Keep yeah. your eyes 
on the one who yes. can save, right? The Bible says in Acts 4 and 12, he said, There is no name given under heaven whereby men may be saved. There's only one name, right? Yes. Allah won't help you. Buddha won't help you. Muhammad won't help you. None of those individuals can help you. I've seen people uh, referring to their different religious organizations just here a while back and their religious affiliations, and they, they were talking about that. I said, look, I said, I serve a Lord who died for me. I said, he is risen, and he is sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high. What about who you're referring to? What about who you're in a relationship? And so uh, what could they say? They're dead, right? They're dead and gone. But we have one who's alive. And then it said, and also in, uh, referred to 121, but in 123 it said, The virgin shall conceive, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is what? With us, right? And so we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. I thank God for that. And I uh, was thinking, as we were referring to different things, that Brother William Siders, uh, the one of the founders of this group of people, of this movement of present years, uh, since the early 1900s, uh, been over 100 years now that we've been we've been progressing uh, since his death in 1952. But God gave him a dream, Sister Brina, Sabrina. And in this dream, he saw umbilical cords stretching up into heaven. And there were a whole bunch of umbilicals running down, and they were all getting intertwined and connected to those umbilical cords were a bunch of babies, right? And he began to unravel those umbilical cords. Those umbilical cords did not go into him, but they stretched into the heaven reaching for the Father. And so what we need to remember is, as a responsibility of ministry, is that we have a responsibility to the Lord to keep the umbilical cords unraveled and keep people connected to the Lord. That's our total responsibility in this life. The sheep don't belong to us. They belong to God. And so we want to uh, we want to make sure that we're about our father's business and maintaining the walk. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, it's a little sometimes, and uh, Brother Mouser wouldn't agree with this, but I'll tell you, it's uh, I've listened to him many times. I've heard him expound upon the Word of God. And when you're standing behind a pulpit, you know the man has is very fundamentally sound, and he teaches, and he preaches under the unction of God and under the anointing of God. It's a little intimidating, someone said. Uh, uh, when you get behind the pulpit, you're in your comfort zone. I said, absolutely not. I am not in my comfort zone. The whole time I'm in the pulpit, I, I, before I, but when I get up in the morning, I begin to quote the 19th Psalm, and I said, it, said, it goes like this. He said, uh, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, my Redeemer and my strength. And so I want my words to be acceptable to God. And so that's all I'm concerned about. And when you stand behind a pulpit or you stand up, and you begin to speak to the, for the Lord or for, you speak for the Lord and begin to try to help individuals and lift them up and bring them into a great, greater understanding of the Lord uh, it's a it's a monumental task, and we certainly feel inadequate for it. And so, is, am I in my comfort zone? Absolutely not. And uh, it's easy to preach when you're under the unction of God and you're under the anointing of God. But day in and day out, we have to carry uh, we carry a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. We carry ourselves in front of the people. We prepare ourselves. We study. We, we make ourselves ready so that the offering that we offer unto God may be acceptable and pleasing in his eyesight. We want him to be pleased with what we do. <clears throat> the Bible says, help me with this in Second Corinthians 5, uh, 17. 
Uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right? So our old life has passed away, and what we're doing has become a new and living way. The old lifestyle, the way we worked in the past, that is, that is not the way we do things anymore, Brother Brandon. We're going to change, right? This is all about a changing relationship with the Lord. And the deeper we get into this relationship with the Lord, the more we're going to find ourselves being changed by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God, and we begin to fashion ourselves uh, even as Jesus was fashioned, right? Uh, Brother James Sodders would make this statement. He said, let us duplicate Christ in all of our duplicatable ways. There's some things that Jesus Christ did I will not ever be able to do. But there are many aspects of his life that I can begin to portray. And that's what we want to do is to make ourselves presentable before the Lord. Would you continue with that in verse uh, 5, 7, 5, 18? And he said, uh, uh, all things are of, are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. We, we, Jesus wasn't lost. God wasn't lost. God provided a plan for us that through Jesus Christ, as many people as would accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that God would set aside their sins. I'm sorry, God would throw away their sins. God would do away with their past. And what happened, that would never be brought up again where the condition that you were in, you may bring it up or your enemies may bring it up, but God would never hold you chargeable to that anymore. Your sins that were you committed in the past, God has forgiven you of them. He made Jesus Christ, according to Romans 3 and 25, He made Jesus Christ a place of perpetuation for our sins. God made His Son an offering for our sin. Aren't we thankful to Him for that? And has now that what God has done, he has not only uh, recognized uh, us through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, but he has also given to us, what, did you, have you read this? He gave to us a ministry of reconciliation. We have a ministry of reconciliation where we are now trying to reconcile people to who? Who are we referring to people to? Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about what, what He has done for me, where He brought me from, how He delivered me. I want you to know, uh, Brother Brandon, you've got a great and a wonderful opportunity. The people that you bump shoulders with, now they're going to see a different Brandon. They're going to see a different individual. And if you will allow the Holy Ghost to work through you, you can become a light to them, and you can even, even begin to reconcile where they were living for self now they could begin to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater glory than that, that we would live a life that would be pleasing to the God. And so, uh, continue please. He said, to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. What was, God, what was Jesus doing? He said, when I came, he said, I came not to do my will, but the will of who he, he who sent me. He said, the words that I speak are not mine, but they're his will, his words, Right? And he said, the works that I do, the works that I do don't belong to me. I tell you, I've said for many years, there's an identity crisis in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people want to build people into them, which is exactly opposite of what God wants individuals to do. They want to build people in their little sects, in their little cells, in their little groups, instead of reconciling them into the world, giving them a ministry that they can turn and reach out to people. I was, I was praying last night, I'll just tell you. I was praying last night, I was thinking about every one of these benches in this, in this, room, in this house. Uh, the house of the Lord. I was thinking about every bench of this. I thought, I said, to lay hands on, I was mentally laying hands on every one of these benches. And I said, Lord, fill these benches. Lord, fill these benches. Put people in here who are hungry after the things of God. 
Put people, put bring people to this church who want to know what it is like to live a life that is pleasing to you and not for self anymore. We don't want to live for self. We don't want to live to, for, for recognition. We're not here to be recognized, right? If we're going to recognize anybody in this church, let us recognize the Lord Jesus Christ for what He has done, what He is doing, and yet for what He will do. That's a very, pre very present help, isn't he? He's a very present help, but not just for the present, but also for the futures. Amen? Who are you laying your life in control of? Who are you giving your life and your future? Whose hands are you laying that in? Uh, you may put you, you may have a, a little uh, financial means, but I want you to know that's all fleeting. That's all going to go away. That's not going to last very long, right? And who knows? The government may take all of your money, and he may give, he may change the monetary system. You may have, you may have several hundred or several thousand dollars laid up, but when the government changes the system, then what do you have? You don't have anything. You don't have anything. Don't put your confidence in money. Don't put your confidence in man. Don't, uh, President Bride Biden can't do anything for us except what God allows him to do. Neither could President Trump nor any of the others. God, God sets in office whom he will. God rules in the kingdom of heaven as well as the kingdom of the men. Raising up, setting up whomsoever he will. Is. Aren't you thankful that you serve one who knows what's going to happen? Praise the Lord. We, we look in the scriptures and from the very onset of the scriptures we see and God said, uh, let us, in Genesis 1, 126, let us create man in our image. Who was he talking to? Who was he talking to? He's talking to the first creation of God, who was daily his delight, who was with him day in and day out. Then in Genesis 3 and 7, 3 and 8, we see the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the garden. Who was the voice of the Lord God? He was the Word. He was the Word of God, right? He was speaking to Adam face to face. And then you know what he did in Psalm 69 and 4? He said he came to restore that which he took not away. Restore what? That was exactly what you were talking about, Sister Sabrina. Restore that relationship back with God, where God could speak to us face to face, where there wouldn't be any charges against us, where we could, we could, we could stand before the judgment throne of God. Amen? Come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain help in the time of trouble. And so we have a faithful and merciful high priest who can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities who were always tempted even as he was, right? So we have a faithful high priest. And not only that, but we can also come before the throne of grace openly without any, without any concerns, right? All our sins as though, though they never were. Right? And when God looks on us, He sees the blood of His precious Son. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Well, I appreciate God and what He has done for us, what He is doing for us. And, and God knows exactly where we are. Amen. Someone said last night, even that Sister Alice, even the very hairs of our head are numbered. Is that not right? Right? Does he? He knows my. He knows my down sittings and my uprising. David said he knows me. He knows the beginning to the end, right? And so we serve a God that understands what is going to happen when we go out these doors. He understands what is going to happen tomorrow, right? He understands what's going to happen next week and next month. All we've got to do is stay in the ship. Stay in the ship. Don't get out of the ship. Don't get out of the boat, right? If we get out of the boat, we're lost, right? But as long as we stay in the ship, the Apostle Paul, when, when they got cut, caught by a hurricane, they were out in the ocean and the Apostle Paul told them, he said, I was warned of God not to take this journey. They wouldn't listen to him. He was nothing but a prisoner. Who was he? He was nothing but a prisoner. They didn't look at him. But they realized that there was something different about him after a little while. And he told them, he said, except these abide in the ship, we cannot be saved. For God has spoken to me by an angel, right? That that what? There won't be one soul lost. I want you to know it's wonderful to have a ministry that has insight on what God is doing and what God has done. 
And I thank God we're standing on the shoulders of, of great men and women who have testified before us, who have showed us what it's like to hold on to God throughout the whatever whatever happens. Don't, don't give up on your hope. If you turn loose of Jesus Christ, what hope do you have? If you turn loose of whatever God has said in front of you, what hope do you have? There's no hope outside of this. I want you to know. Uh, the world is running headlong. And, and, and most places, they, they just want to be entertained. Uh, well, we're not here. To, we're not entertainers. We're not here. We may want to play beautiful music or sing beautiful songs to you that, that will touch your heart. And that's all well and good. But we're not here to entertain. We're here to exhort, reprove, correct, and instruct. And instruct on where the kingdom of God should grow. Now, it's not going to feel good all the time. Uh, this is not a feel-good place, right? This is not a place to make you feel good. I'm not going to preach a message of prosperity to you, tell you there's going to be at a Cadillac in every driveway. I'm not here to do that. But I'm here to tell you if you will invest in this, if you will put your life in this, that Christ will help you. Christ will meet every one of your needs. Christ will provide for you if you'll just allow Him to do it. Trust in Him. And lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path, right? If anybody's going to direct my path, I want somebody who knows what's going to happen in the future, aren't you? If you put your hands in, you put your money in the hands of a financial advisor, you want someone who's got a proven track record of what they can do. You don't want to put your, your confidence or your money, your hard earned earnings in the hands of a fly by night or, or Johnny come lately. You want somebody who's been on the job and proven that through thick in sin, that He will stick with you. He will stay with you. He will be prosper. You will prosper because of His instructions. Praise the Lord. So I, I appreciate the Lord, what He has done for me and, and where He has brought me from. And, and uh, I, I don't have any bad news to say to you. In the kingdom of God, everything is yea and amen. Uh, I want you to know, the Scripture says, and we, we, we all go through uprisings and downfallings. And Sister Coffey was referring last night that when we started a church in Dundee, uh, we started another church about, about, uh, about an hour away uh, in Ohio County, about an hour west of Elizabethtown. And, and six, we, we lost 60 people in one move. Uh, that's, that's tough. Uh, we've lost people and 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 divisions and splits and all those sorts of things. We, we've all we've all suffered through that. But thank God you're here. Thank God you're here. And you and and Sister Sabrina, you want to be a pillar. A pillar is something that doesn't move. A pillar. You may not see the structural uh, design or what a pillar does, but there there are supporting walls. That wall right there and this wall right here. They're be they're bearing a lot of weight. And, and, and they have to have be set on a firm foundation. They, they cannot move. They, they get in one position and they stay. And it doesn't matter if the winds come, the rains come, if snow falls, if it's hot, they stay on the job. You don't get away from that. You've got to stay on the job. You got to stay with what God has given you. You can't just be moving up and running hither and yon. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about everybody. Amen? Right. Is, is that a true statement? It's about its message for all of us. Uh, we don't stand behind the pulpit and pick out tar target subjects. We don't do that, right? We may target sin or we may target trouble that's on the horizon. But we don't preach on individuals here. What we do, we preach about situations and circumstances and what is going to cause people to lose out with God. I want you to know, if you, if you walk away, I want you to know, you're not going to walk away to something better. You're not going to walk away to some, some place that's going to give you a deeper understanding of God. It's not going to happen. I, I've, been, I've been in the body since, the body since 1959. I've been in the body of Jesus Christ since 19... I wasn't born in the body like my wife. But I came along. I came through the Baptist. I came through the Church of God of Prophecy. I came through the apostolic work. And then I arrived at 1400 South 4th Street under Brother James Siders, right? And since then, 
Since that time I've been there, I, I, I began to learn. I began to have my eyes open. I began to get illuminated. There were a lot, lot of people. It would have been a lot easier on me to, to go another way. It would not have been so confining. But I want, to, I want you to know, I don't find the ways of the Lord confining. I don't find anything that He asked of me too hard. Right? Because I want you to know what He has given me surpasses anything I would ever had out in this world. Praise the Lord. Uh, and so many years ago, I got called to the ministry. And when I got called to the ministry, I'm just going to tell you, I had a dream. And, and I haven't worked in public work since, since 1999. In 1999, I was 48, and, and our company closed down. They wanted to send me to North Carolina. I didn't go. But, I, but before all this, I had a dream. And, and I had a dream. We had it. Brother James Siders took me back in his office. And we were sitting there at a table. And Brother James Siders was talking to me. And uh, they're sitting in front of me. I don't know if you've ever seen. I'm sure you have seen these camel, camel hair, uh, long, uh, like a trench coat, long winter coats. But there, but there were two long coat sitting between Brother James Siders and I. And one was one was beige and one was gray. And as as uh, as he was talking to me, he said, I want to tell you something. And so I was looking at him and, and behind him lay a blue uh, cashmere coat, just like the others, but it was such a beautiful color, I just couldn't take my eyes out it off of it. And he kept looking at me, he'd say he'd say, Pay attention to what I'm saying. I said, yes, sir. And I said, yes, sir. And so I kept looking at him. And then I, I started looking at that coat again. And so, so then I want you to know, I want you to know, he, he, he turned around and he said, son, he said, I want to tell you something. He said, those two coats right there belong to you. He said, and he turned and he picked up that coat and he laid it on top of the others. He said, now I'm giving you this one. But I, I want you to know something. He said, I'm giving you this one, but you better be very careful. And then he turned around and he, he had a check. And he said, here's a check to cover your expenses. Now, I got, I got laid off out of work since in 1999. I was 48. I wasn't able to draw retirement. I didn't draw retirement or, or Social Security until I was 65. And then my wife was working. She had been a nurse for about 40 some odd years. And she was working. And she got laid off. And she got fired. I don't know. Fired, I guess. She got fired for doing such a good job. And, and so the, I want you to know, a month before, they gave her a $2,500 bonus before she got fired, telling her how good a job she had done and what, she, what a blessing she was to facility. And, she, and when, she, when she got fired, I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll be all right. She said, oh, no, we're not going to be all right. I said, yes, we are going to be all right. I knew in my mind that what God had told me, he was going to give me a check to cover our expenses. I want you to know I haven't, our bills have all been paid. We haven't gone, with, we haven't gone without, any, without anything. And most everything we want, God has provided, right? Uh, I didn't. I didn't go out and look for another job. I had people offer me jobs. I had them offer me a job in North Carolina, and they was going to pay me in 1999 a hundred and two thousand dollars to to move to North Carolina and take this position, and they were going to offer me ten thousand dollars to uh, for moving expenses and five thousand dollars to get set up. Now, and I said no to all that. I said, no, I don't want that. I'm not going to do that. Well, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to trust God. We're going to believe God. I want you to know God can take care of you and, and put His head about you and provide for you what you have need of, right? You just got to have confidence in Him. You just got to believe in Him. You just got to trust in Him. If you'll trust in God, God won't sell you short. If you, God will provide for every one of your needs. You may not get everything you want, but I want you to know He's able to take care of you. Amen? And He, and he told, uh, He said concerning Solomon, He said, look at Solomon in all of his glory. He wasn't arrayed as, as these uh, beautiful flowers of the field. He said, consider, consider those things. He said, 
He said how beautiful they were. Solomon was the richest man in the world. He was the richest man in the world. Josephus said stones were, uh, silver was as common as stones in the days of Solomon, right? He had riches untold, right? But I want you to know all that was vanity and vexation of the spirit, right? That's all that did was brought about a different spirit about him. I want you to know it's altogether different when you enter into a close relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and allow Him to take care of you. And when you put your hand in His hand, He's able to take you in a place that you would not go. That's what He told Peter. He said, when you were young, you went wheresoever thou wouldest. But He said, but now you're old and another is going to clothe you and take you where you would not go, right? And so here we're here today testifying about the goodness of God. I'm not talking about past experiences. I'm not, I'm not talking about future experiences. I'm telling you that right now that God has provided for me and my family. And I want you to know I haven't done without. I haven't gone without. I may not have been made the wisest decision that I could make, but I want you to know God has always been faithful. You'll never have to worry about God being faithful. God will always be on the job. He will always be providing for His people and give us whatsoever we have need of, right? So what we need to do is when, when we're, in a, we're in a strait, we need to get His attention. We need to begin to call on the name of the Lord in a greater way than what we have. And when we do that, I want you to know, God's hand is not too short. It's not too short that He can't reach out and save. And there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that would like to have understanding and the ability to receive from God uh, because all they're hearing is fairy tales. They're hearing fairy tales. They, they have little understanding of what they're up against. Uh, Brother James Saunders used to stand up against the wall, he, and he would do like this. You remember that, Sister Linda? He would do like that. And, and, and he said, while he was standing up against the wall, you know what was happening? You know what was happening? He said, yeah, you're exactly right. He said he was shadow boxing. You, you know what? There wasn't anything fighting against him. There wasn't anything. He said, we're not shadow boxing. We know what we're up against. Amen? I'm not looking, behind, looking for a booger man behind every corner. I'm not, I'm not looking uh, to serve God out of a, a fear that, he's go that I'm going to be cast in a place and burned forever. Amen? You know better than that. Right? You know, you've been taught. You know better than that. God, God, is, God doesn't want you to serve Him because of fear, but God wants you to serve Him because you love Him, right? And when we enter that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and love Him, right? I want you to know His love is going to supersede everything that we've ever known. Praise the Lord. It already has superseded everything we've ever known, has it not? Has He not raised us up and gave us position and gave us things that our families know nothing about? They have no comprehension of what it's like. And, I, I, and to have a desire to serve God is what we need is a greater desire to follow after God and search for Him. Solomon said in Proverbs uh, 2, he said, search for her as silver. He said, and, as, as, and, and seek for her as hidden treasure. I want you to know the things of God are hidden in here, and God wants individuals to know that these things are provided for Him. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can take this little line right here, brother. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about our, our scriptures here in, in Numbers. The, I, want to, I want to give you a little background on this. Numbers 15. Let us turn there. Use my hard copy. Numbers 15 and verse 30. I, I want to lay this. I want to lay this in your mind, and I hope you grab a hold of this. The soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger. The same 
reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people, because he has, now get this word, despised the word of the Lord, and has broken his covenant, that soul shall be utterly cut off, his iniquity shall be upon him. So what would happen to that soul that despised the word of God? Do you realize that Jesus came to a group of people and when he came to a group of people who was doing miracles and wonders in front of them and he was casting out evil spirits, causing the lame to walk, the blind to see. You're, you're very aware of that. But in, in Matthew 12, in Luke 12, in Mark the third chapter, he deals with a sin called the sin of blaspheming the Holy Ghost. And while he was speaking, he said, If any man speak an evil word against the Son of Man, then that shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the, the Holy Ghost, uh, that will not be forgiven him in this world, nor in the world to come. And so we're not so much concerned about that in these days, but uh, we want to be sure that we have a love for the Word of God. Jesus said, I came. And when I came, I came and delivered unto the people the word of God. He said, and not only that, but the purpose of God. And so when he put that on display and gave that to them, what did they do? They openly despised him because he did not come into alignment with the system. He did not come into alignment with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Zealots, the Herodians, and any of those religious groups, right? And so the statement was also made by Caiaphas, the high priest in the book of John, that he said it is necessary that one man should die for the nation, else we lose our place amongst the Romans. And so that was no longer a position as high priest given by, and I, I know you're well taught. Uh, I may say it's a little bit different. If I'm wrong, Brother Bobby can correct it later. And he said, he said, the Romans will come and take away our position. It was a political position now, right? They, they were not there because they were in the right family of the tribe of Levi, a son of Aaron. Now it is a political arrangement. And so in Israel, we had a political arrangement with the Herodians being under Herod. And then we had the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, nor angels. That's why they were sad, don't you see? <laughs> and so, and so they were they were sad about that. And so, and so, but Jesus did not align himself with that. You can pick that up in Matthew 19. And when you pick up that back that book, that Matthew 19, the scribes and them came to Jesus, tempting him, testing him, saying, "What line of thought do you follow? It, how if a man should put away his wife for any cause?" And, he, and he, he gave him a reproof. He said, I'm not following either one of these thoughts that you all support. But he said, in the beginning, God. Right? In the beginning, God. And so what we need to be concerned about is with what God says. Right? And so I, I'm talking to you about despising the Word of God. At the same time, I want to take you into the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews. In the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, the Apostle Paul is writing a letter to who? To the, the Romans, the Catholics. Who's he writing this book to? He's writing to the Hebrews. Very good. And so when he makes this statement, uh, and coming out of the 10th chapter, and I'm not going to do, read it all, but I do want to read part of it because I think it's relevant to us today. I think it's very relevant to what we are doing right now and, and so the Bible also said at one time his voice then shook the earth, but not only will he shake the earth, but he'll shake the heavens also. And everything that can be shaken will what? Will be shaken. You want to be sure that you're not shaken. You want to be sure that you're not shaken out. You want to be sure that you don't, you don't get offended over a word over something that is being taught, over something that is being said. You want to be sure that you don't take 
offense at what is being taught if we're speaking the Word of God, if we're teaching the Word of God. You want to be sure you don't get offended at it because you don't want to be caught despising the Word of God, right? Jesus said, the words that I speak, they're going to judge you, right? There's not going to be a judgment come on you by some other source, but Jesus is at the right hand of the majesty on high, and all judgment has been committed unto him. If we don't receive what he says, then what are we, what's going to happen to us? We're going to come under the judgment of God whether we move up or not, right? And it doesn't matter which direction. I want you to know, I, 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 I left my family in Louisville. Uh, when, when I went to Elizabethtown, my wife said the, the first time we went there, there were only 16 people. And Linda, if Brother Tyrone with it, wasn't with us. Yeah, it was later on that Tyrone, Sister Charlene, and all them. Uh, there were 16 people inside Elizabethtown. And so uh, there had been a, a shake in there. There had been people that had been tore up, things that were being done that were not correct. And, and when we came in there, we, 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 I didn't know if we could help them. I told them, I told, I told Brother Rader when Brother Rader asked me to go to Elizabethtown. I, first of all, Brother Don, he said, Brother Rader said, Concerning me going to Elizabethtown, he said, My God, you don't want him. By the time he gets done, there won't be one person let, left on your platform. And so, uh, at any rate, Brother Rader, uh, sub, Br Brother Rader conceded to the idea of me going there. And uh, I, I told him when he asked me to go to Elizabethtown, I said, I can't help them people. They're too far gone. And so that's exactly, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. And, and you know what? I was right. I couldn't help them. But God could, right? God could. God could use somebody to help them. And God, God brought them up out of that place and, and gave, gave them a name and gave them, uh, uh, gave them a reputable church. God, God did all that. But God works through instrument, human instrumentality. You are the ministry of God reconciling the world, right? And I told them when we, when, we, when we came to that church, I said, I want you to know in this church, you can come to this church. I said, if you can't fit anywhere else, you'll be able to fit here, amen? We'll be a hospital. We'll bind up your wounds. We'll help you. We'll teach you. We'll give you instruction, right? And we'll do it in love, right? And then John 13, 35, 13, 34, And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, 35, by the way that you do what? You have love, how? One to another. I want you to know you have the same spirit in this church that we have in Elizabethtown, uh, and that we love one another. Michaela, I was so happy to see you. I asked you about where you were going. What, how was your work doing? How was your school going? How were your grades doing? How, how did I know about that? Because I have acquainted myself with you because you concern me. Not only do you concern me, but you concern the God of heaven. And if God is concerned about you, we need to be concerned about one another, right? And so I uh, thank God. I thank God for what God is doing for us. And we need to take account of what God is giving to us, right? And so this is a, this is a scripture that I, I haven't heard it used this way uh, in uh, 1019, Brother, Brother Shade. Uh, 1019. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to do what? to enter into the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to know, 90, 95% of the church world doesn't teach that you can enter the holiest of all. Do they? They teach that there's still a veil up there. Still a veil up there. But in the ninth chapter of Hebrews, it said the veil in the temple was rent, signifying the way into the holiest of all is now what? Now made manifest. It's now made available, right? I want you to know, you don't have to say in a sin condition, sin, sin and repent, sin and repent. You can come in the holy place and there you can abide 
forever. Amen. You don't have to go out anymore, right? We can sit under the, the light of the seven golden candlesticks. We can eat off the table of showbread. We can offer incense upon the golden altar, right? Which sends up a sweet fragrance to God. But I want you to know that the heavens are available to us that we can get right up there. We can get right there and there's nothing going to be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus that we can have this hope, amen, that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another eternal in the heavens which we earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from above. If so being found clothed, we'll not be found naked, amen. We can move on out, amen, having boldness, amen. There's not any drawback. We're confident in what God is able to do and what God has done. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By a new and living way, which He has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say His flesh. Christ made the provision for us. Christ opened up the way for us. He said, He said, He said, the, 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 Jesus said in John 14, he said, uh, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Hmm. What about the next one? The weather I go, ye know, and the way you know. And what happened then? Thomas said, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He was, he was illuminating them that the way that you were going to get to the Father was through him. There wasn't going to be any more animal sacrifices anymore. Wasn't going to be any of that. There wasn't going to be any blood of bullocks and goats or, or, or rams. Or, there wasn't going to be any handful of fine flowers. Wasn't going to be any more uh, uh, any more turtle doves. What a day for the animal kingdom, amen. That they were no longer going to be received as a sacrifice, right? But 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 Jesus said, the, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." And if you want to find your way to the Father, you're not going to be able to do it through animal sacrifices anymore, you're going to have to come through Jesus Christ. You're going to have to recognize Him. Right? And yet, you know, for all this, that they could not comprehend, and they still wanted to intertwine the law, the Mosaic law, into the covenant of grace. Get this when you begin to read about Paul's writings. He said in verse 21, he said, Having the high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Now, this, this is dealing with your faith and your confidence in God, your belief in God, your belief that Jesus is, and He is a rewarder of those that do what? Diligently seek Him. 11 and 6, Hebrew. And He said, uh, 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 full of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, Brother Brandon, your hearts being sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure waters. Amen. Aren't you thankful that Jesus stood up on the last day of the great feast according to John the 7th chapter, what, 37? He said on the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood up and said, Ho! He that is a thirst, let him come unto me and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Amen. Right? This spake he of the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Ghost had not yet been given, for Christ had not yet been glorified. And so now we have this living water, this artesian well springing up unto everlasting life inside of us. Now we know the way, the truth, and the life. He said in John 16, he said, When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he shall do what? He's going to testify of me. He's going to proclaim me. And he will reprove the world of its iniquity. Praise God. He said, let us hold fast. Where are we at, folks? Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is what? 
He is faithful His promise. It doesn't matter what, how big the storms are. It doesn't matter what is going on in the, in the religious, in the ecumenical, the financial world. I want you to know we can still hold on because God is faithful as promised, right? God will take care of you, right? Are you, are you valuable to God? Well, you certainly are. If He gave His Son... He gave His Son a ransom for our sin. Are, are we valuable? Amen. If God thought enough about you to put His Son on the cross and crucify Him for your sins, for why we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us when we were yet without hope. He was willing to lay down His life whether we would serve Him or not. Praise His holy name. What a wonder He is. Praise God. <laughs> Can we hold on to Him? Praise the Lord. He said, let us consider one another. To do what? To provoke unto love and do what? And good works. That is what we have. Jesus said, and my goodness, I got so many scriptures in my head. Jesus said in Matthew 5.13, He said, you are, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, what good is it? But to be cast down and trodden under the foot of man. He said, you are the light of the world. He said, you are a city which is set upon a hill which cannot be hid, right? And he said, if we're the light of the world, if we're the salt of the earth, amen, are we backing away from what God has called us to do? God forbid that we back away from what God has called us to do. If, if the salt is not seasoning the flood, seasoning people's lives, then... then what use is salt? Amen? What use is light? Amen? If we're in a world full of darkness and there's no light in it, amen? We're going we're gonna to stumble around. We're going to trip. We're going to fall. If the blind lead the blind, what happens? They all fall in the dish. I haven't forgotten my line of thought, Brother Chan. Jay, just bear with me. That's, preachers do that sometimes. You probably noticed that. And so, and so Jesus said, if the salt has lost its savor, what 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 good is it? What good is it? Let me ask you. Christian people who don't have any salt in their self can't stand for God. Here we are in the green, and we can't run with footmen. What shall we do in the day of the horse? What are we going to do? Amen. If, if, if we're in a we're in a good spot, a good spot without tribulation, without without any trials, much trials or, or many tests going on, uh, and we can't stand for God, Mom. What about that? My goodness, what good are we, right? But we're the salt of the earth, Amen. When people come into a relationship with us, you know what happens? We make them thirsty for the things of God. When, when I go to a Chinese restaurant like yesterday, I went to a Chinese restaurant right down the street here. You know what? They've got, they've got a lot of teriyaki sauce. They've got all these sauce that are full of sodium. And you know what happens? When, when you start eating that, you know what happens? It causes you to, to gain a thirst. You're gaining a thirst, right? You're looking for something to wet your whistle, if you will. You want something to wet your tongue, right? Because there's such a salt. There's something, there should be something in our life, Brother Brandon, that's causing people to want to know what we've come into relationship with, right? And not only that, but you know, the other thing that salt does, it preserves. It preserves naturally. Uh, when, when I was a kid, I used to work on a farm, and we would go out to this old house, uh, this old house, and you'd see meat hanging up everywhere. Mom, you know what I'm talking about. You know where I'm going before I go, don't you? And so well, they had these tables, and it was the tables were just covered with salt. And we just keep rubbing that meat over and over that salt, and that salt would begin to permeate that meat. And when it permeates that meat, we put a cheese cloth around it and hang it up on hang it up on the on the on the rafter, the joist. Uh, and so when we'd hang it up there, you know what? We weren't worried about flies getting rid of it. We weren't worried about anything. But I want to tell you something. When, when, you not, when you ate that, you better have something to drink. 
because you were going to be so thirsty. But what did salt do? Salt preserved that meat and it could be hung up in a condition that was not favorable for it, that normally it would have spoiled, but what happened? There was a preservative effect. Amen. That's what our life should do is preserve the life of people that we come in contact with, right? Praise the Lord. That's the reason we serve God is because He's got such preserving power. Amen. Is He able to keep what we able what we commit unto Him? Am I talking too long? Oh, God. I, oh, God. My goodness. And so God is able to keep whatever we commit unto Him. And He's able to preserve our life. But I want you to know there should be something different about us. There should be something different about us. If, if we're not different than the church down the street down this way, I want you to know we have no right to be in existence. But we have got a different message. A different message. Amen. We've got a different means. Amen. We've got a different organization. We've got some things that are different than what they can begin to comprehend. And what we are doing will not work for them. Amen? Because this is the house of God and what we're trying to do is build it according to the blueprints. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want you to know, Jesus began to preach and He began to tell people in the book of John, He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll have no life in you. Is that what he said? And he, and he said, from that time, many disciples began to draw away from him. And when they, when they left him, you know what he said? He, he looked at Peter and John. He looked at those disciples that were, that were right there close to him. He said, why don't you go too? Thank God for a revelation. Amen. You better get a revelation. You better get a vision. Amen? You better get a vision, amen, that you're here to serve God. And so the, the, vision, the vision, Peter spoke up. He said, where can we go? Where could we go? For the, we, know, we know thou hast the words of eternal life. And we, are, we know and assure that thou art the Christ. Amen? So when we, we hear from God, we better get something down in our heart. We better get some grit down in our heart that we're going to be a pillar in the house of God. We're going to be unmovable, unshakable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that what? Knowing that what? Brother Bob, whatever we do in this life, our labor is what? Is not. It's not in vain. Amen? We're building for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? He adds to the church such as He will. Praise God. Yes, He will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's consider one another to provoke to love and good works. You you feel like I'm provoking you to love and to good works today? Praise the Lord. So this is applicable to us. It may not be interpreted being to us, but application, it fits us very well. Continue if we will. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some, some is, but what? Exhorting one another. Thank you for exhorting me last night and today. Exhorting one another, right? And so much more as you see what? What's on the horizon, folks? Amen. What's on the horizon? If we give up now, if we turn loose now, where will our children be? Sister Sabrina, if you hadn't stayed on the job, where would your son have come back to? Where would he be? Where would he be going? Amen. There had to be somebody stay on the job and hold, holding on to the Lord, right? So we've got to hold on to the Lord if we expect anybody else to come in the door. Praise the Lord. Sister Kathy, we've got people we're reaching for. We've got family members that have left, who have, who have gone astray. We've got individuals like that in our life. We know them. Amen. They have tasted the good award of God. They have experienced the Holy Ghost, right? And they, they've walked away from it. Amen. Something got in their, something got in their crawl. Something got in their vision, amen? And they lost their way. 
But if we don't keep the light on, thank God for, what do you call that motel? Motel 6, we leave the light on for you, right? So there's still a light on here, here in, on Missouri Avenue. I was talking to the uh, manager of the uh, Uri Inn this morning. And he, he, said, he said, where are you going? Are you going somewhere to preach? I said, well, I don't know. I heard a lot of preaching last night. I, they probably won't need me tonight. And, and so he began to talk to me. I said, I said, where do you go to church? I said, did you know that right down here on Missouri Avenue, there's a church called Gospel Assembly Church, and there's a place in there that they will receive you, and you can receive the power of the Holy Ghost in your life? He said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, okay. He didn't understand what I was talking about. But I want you to know, if, if we don't make them thirsty for the things of God, what are we going to do, Right? We've got a responsibility to this community, amen, to preach the Word of God to begin to cause them to hunger and thirst after the things of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's see. For if we sin willfully, now get this because this is going to, this is going to tie in. You remember when I gave you uh, Mark 15 and 30, uh, it said presumptuously. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There, there's going to be a penalty for that. If you, if you willingly go against the law of God, the Word of God, if you willingly go, there's going to be a penalty. doesn't mean God won't forgive you, but there will be a penalty for that. Right? And uh, I'm, 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 going to, I'm trying to hurry here. You know how it is. I, I don't want to make my words... <laughs> I don't want to make my words everlasting by making my sermons eternal. <laughs> and he said, uh, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now remember that statement that I gave you in 1531? That he that despised God's law, keep that in your mind, he that uh, a certain fiery a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation which shall defy their adversaries. He that despised Moses' law did what? Died without mercy under two or three witnesses. It wasn't Moses' law. It was God's law. Moses received it from the hand of God and delivered it unto the people. And he took a hyssop, dipped it in blood, sprinkled it on the people, sprinkled it on the law, bound the people to the law and the law to the people. And they agreed, right? And now if you despise what the Lord has said, then what would happen to those individuals? They would be stoned. They would be put to death, right? How much sore punishment... Suppose ye ought that shall be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. What about when, when these individuals, these Hebrews, the whole book of Hebrews is a book of comparison. First off, First off, he starts, God who in sundry times and diverse manners has spoken to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his heir, by his son, by whom he also created the world, right? So the contrast between the law and the prophets and Jesus. And then, then he went on, he said, For which unto the angels said he at any time, Thou art my beloved son, this day I have begotten thee. But he had given him a name above every angel. So he's higher than the law and the prophets. He's higher than the angels. And then he went on to say, he said, look at Moses' house. Moses built a house, right? And whose house was it? It was God's house. Whose son, who was the son over that house? And he goes on to talk, talk about Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Right? So was it greater than... Abraham that came, your father Abraham. Then he went, went on to talk about the Levitical priesthood. 
He talked about the Levitical priesthood, and he talked about the order of Melchizedek. Then he talked about, he goes from Melchizedek, he goes on and begin to talk about, and so all, all these things, he, I mean, my, my mind is full of these things. Uh, I hope yours is too. And he begins to talk about the law of Melchizedek and, the, and those different laws, and he begins to m make a comparison to them. Then he comes in, he said, there was a better covenant. There was a covenant better than the Mosaic covenant. What was it? A covenant of grace, right? Established with better promises and a better hope, right? And so when he begins to make all these comparisons to these people, they should have been recognizing what the Apostle Paul was saying. But what was happening was they, they were accept, not accepting the covenant of grace and they thought that what they could do is go back and begin to offer animal sacrifices again. And what were they doing when, they, when they, would, they would deny what God has opened up to them? Listen, folks, we better not deny what God has opened up to us, right? And we better not count the blood, uh, the blood of the Son of God ineffective, right? That it's not good enough. I want you to know there's not a better way. There's no better way, amen? And if you found the body of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. If you found a place, amen, in the body of Jesus Christ, amen, you shouldn't seek no other place. You shouldn't be looking for something else. Nobody said, told me to say anything, and I'm not saying anything. This is to everybody, and this is a warning going out to you to express to you that we better hold fast to the things which we have been taught. Amen? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said in the second chapter of the book of Hebrews, he said, therefore... We ought to give them more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression received a just recompense of reward. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? That what? That was first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard it. God himself bearing witness. Do what? Witness both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. We better pay attention to what we've been taught. Amen? Don't accept any counterfeit. You know, you know in the bank, I, I, I hear this about bank people. I'm coming back to Hebrews 10. Uh, I hear this about bank people. But you know what they do? They take them, they take them into the bank and, and they teach them what a hundred dollar bill am I, am I right, Sister Pam? They teach them what a hundred dollar bill looks like and all the characteristics of it. Right? And then when they get a counterfeit that comes in, they're looking for the characteristics of that hundred dollar bill which has been ingrained in their mind and readily when they don't see the characteristics of that hundred dollar bill, a warning light goes off. Amen? A warning sign comes up. What about you? You know enough about the Lord to recognize His characteristics? You know enough about the Lord to recognize when it's God and when it's not? Amen. We, we can have people, and I've seen them all my life, and you have too. I've watched people come up and slide across the pulpit. Slide one way. Get, get lifted up in their self. Amen? And begin to speak and get real loud and put the right inflections on it. Amen? Have the pianist and the organ play. Have you not seen that? And, and, and pumping up the people. Hey, I want you to know we, we don't pump water by our feet, do we, Brother Bobby? Amen? We don't get the water by the pumping of our feet. Amen? We've got an artesian well. Springing up, praise God. We're looking for the anointing, the confirmation of the Lord. When ministers are speaking, we're looking for something down inside that makes connection with me. Yes. Says, Amen, brother. I'm healing down in my soul. Yes. Praise His holy name. Praise God. Amen. You better know a counterfeit. Amen. Unless you'll wind up with a hundred dollar bill and you'll walk in, somebody will say, That's not real. And they'll take your hundred dollar bill. Don't accept no counterfeits. 
There's, a, there's no counterfeit for the body of Jesus Christ. If it don't taste like it, look like it, smell like it, it's not like it. Hello? Hello? Come on, let's wake up, church. Amen. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Amen. Let's recognize what hour we're living in. Praise God. <sighs> My goodness. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth to me, and I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. How's he going to judge his people? There's a pattern. We got some seamstress in here, don't we? Got a pattern. Yep. You lay your pattern out. Yep. You, lay, you lay your material out. And then what do you do with your material? You, you cut it with the pattern. Right. What happens if you don't cut it with the pattern? You're going to, you're going to try to put it together and it's not going to fit. Do you realize that people are trying to fit the everlasting gospel into their way of living unto what they want to do and what they think is right and it doesn't line up with the pattern which we have been given? Amen. When you do that, then guess what happens? They're not going to measure up. There's only one measuring stick. God will never have another measuring stick. And everything in the world is going to be judged by that one measuring stick. You know who that is? That's Christ Jesus the righteous. Amen? And if we don't measure up to Him, I want you to know we're not going to make it. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Well, you see what the reproof was. If they, if they despise Moses' law in the hands of two or three witnesses, then what happens? That was the end of them. Right? So now, what about Christ? What about Christ? If, if we despise what God has set in course in the earth, and we despise that, we, we say away with this. Away with this. In the book of Jeremiah, they made this statement over and over and over. Let us hear the burden of the word of the Lord. The burden of the word of... Is the word of God a burden to you? Is it a burden? When God asks something of you, you consider it a burden? When ministers preach the gospel, you consider that a burden? That's the condition that Israel got in, and that the Word of God become a burden to them. Praise God! I'm not look. I don't think it's a burden. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy... And my burdens are light. Amen. He wasn't putting a, something on you that you weren't able to bear. But also He empowered you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 and 8, Jesus made this statement. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Praise God. We've got a power inside of us. Amen. It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. Amen. Whew. Hallelujah! Praise His name! I hope you feel this! Praise God! It's alive! The Word of God is alive! Thank you, Jesus! But call to remembrance of former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. What about you? Anybody ever turn their back on you? Anybody ever say bad things about you when you were only trying to do good? They even walk across the street, didn't want to meet you eye to eye, didn't, didn't want to come into a, 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 your, your line of vision, amen, would turn their head when you looked at them. Did you ever suffer that? I want you to know that was nothing to what the Apostle Paul said. Amen. Nothing to what he did. In death's offering. Amen. A day and a night in the deep, right? Beaten, whipped, thrown in jail. And all these different things that they suffered for the glory of God. What, was there any place for them to turn back? Well, no, there was no place for them to turn back. And there's no place for us to turn back. 
If, 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 you, if, you take, if you take on with the ministry over what we're teaching that God has provided us to teach unto you, which, what do you do? You do despite unto the Word of God. Is it, not, is it not precious in your eyesight, the Word of God? He said it would be sweet in your mouth, but what? Bitter, Bitter in your belly, right? It, it, it wouldn't taste so good when you have to do it. How, how lovely are the songs. How beautiful are the feet of them to bring the gospel of good news, right? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? By the Word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except he be sent? Amen. Our ministry is not, is not uh, take a profession up for themselves for, for longevity or for financial means. Amen. We're called of God even as Aaron was called. Hallelujah. Right? God calls us into the ministry. And whom God calleth, He equips. Praise the Lord. But ye had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods knowing in yourselves that you have a better, you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. And here's, here's a verse I've been looking for since I started here. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Don't give up on your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't give up on what God has provided for us. Amen? A lot of things have happened. A lot of things have transpired. Amen? We have loved ones come and go. Sister Yolanda. Come and go. They went down toward the goal. They went down facing the goal. Amen? They went on to their reward. What happens if we cast away our confidence? What, what do we do? What, what are we going to have in the end? Amen? I want you to know it's going to pay dividends. Amen? It's going to put something down in your life, in the lives of your family, and you're going to, have the, you're going to be that salt of the earth that preserves your natural family. Amen? They're going to begin to look at you. They're going to begin to, I need you to pray for me. I know you've got a special connection with God. I want you to know, yes, you do have a special connection with God. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Don't cast that away because it has a great recompense and reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back. Amen. Unto perdition, condemnation, damnation, but we are them that do what? That believe unto the saving of the soul. The, amen. We're looking toward the goal, aren't we? Amen. We're running toward the mark, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You can't hear that everywhere. You're not going to get that everywhere. But you can get it right here. Thank God. The hope and, and the confirmation of God's Spirit. What God has delivered unto us. Folks, let's embrace what God has given us. Let's embrace it. Let's love it. Let's cherish it. Let's give our life for it. But in, in the end, it's going to produce something in our life that will never pass away. A hope beyond the sky. Amen. Praise His holy name. So I have no bad things to say to you today. I have no negative messages to preach to you today. I can tell you in Christ Jesus... Everything is yay and amen. Let's go on, church. There are greater things ahead. Let's press closer, amen, and be spirit-led, amen. For our Lord, let's take a stand as we go throughout the land. Praise His holy name. So God bless you. So good to be with you. Feel His precious spirit, amen. You don't have liberty like this, amen. But where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty, amen, not to do what you want, but to obey and follow after God. 
Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise